Boeing is set for a test launch of its small spacecraft headed to the International Space Station this Thursday, part of its efforts to increase manned space launches from U.S. soil. The space station has long been an international collaboration, and Russia and the United States have long been partners. But the invasion of Ukraine has led to new tensions and questions about the future. Miles O'Brien has our report about the rhetoric versus the reality. More than two months since Russia launched its war against Ukraine, and it seems like business as usual aboard the International Space Station, despite the turmoil 250 miles below. First through the hatch is Denise Matviev. The coming and going rituals of hugs, smiles, and ceremony are intact. Russian cosmonaut Anton Skaplarov handed over command to NASA astronaut Tom Marshburn at the end of March with some poignant words. People uh, have problem on Earth, on orbit. We are one crew, and I think uh, ISS is like symbol of the friendship and cooperation. The camaraderie between U.S. and Russian spacefarers is more than lip service. You know, when you're on the space station, it's like there's Earth with all the other humans, and then we're here. And this is our community, our world right now. Former NASA astronaut Scott Kelly was twice a commander of the space station, logging nearly a year on board during his last stint in 2015 and 16. And what's important to us is not necessarily what's important to the, those people down there because we're kind of relying on each other for emotional, psychological support, help, friendship, literally our lives. But the head of the Russian space agency, Russ Cosmos, is on another kind of mission. Dmitry Rogozhin, a prominent nationalist, is using social media to deliver a series of menacing, even nuclear threats aimed at his Western partners in the International Space Station. In early March, he tweeted a video of workers covering up partner flags on a Soyuz rocket, writing, the rocket would look more beautiful. Scott Kelly fired back on his Twitter feed, your space program won't be worth a damn, he wrote. Maybe you can find a job at McDonald's, if McDonald's still exists in Russia. The reason I did it in the way I did it is because I wanted to get his attention, and it worked. And then he t fires back pretty quickly. Yeah, he called me a moron. He said uh, if the space station is, uh, is deorbited or something, or if the program is canceled, it's going to be my fault. A few days later, Rogozhin orchestrated the release of a spoof video depicting cosmonauts closing the hatch to the Russian modules and drifting away from the station, leaving U.S. astronaut Mark Vandehei behind, home alone. And Rogozhin has repeatedly threatened to pull out of the space station because of Western sanctions aimed at Russia. But NASA leaders are not taking the bait. Kathy Leaders is the associate administrator in charge of human spaceflight. Our flight controllers are still talking together. Our teams are still talking together. We're still doing training together. We're still working together. It would be a sad day for international operations if we can't continue to peacefully operate in space. The U.S., Russia, Canada, Europe, and Japan have been doing that for the better part of 30 years. It was an ironic twist for Cold War space race adversaries. But in the early 1990s, Congress was balking at the cost of what was then called space station freedom. And the Clinton administration wanted to keep Russian rocket scientists employed for fear they might sell their services to the likes of North Korea. It was essentially a merger between two uh, human spaceflight programs in, in, two in two countries. Anatoly Zak is publisher and editor of RussianSpaceWeb.com. After the U.S. won the race to put humans on the moon, the Russians focused on long-duration missions on a series of space stations, culminating with the Mir. Russian space program was looking down black hole, complete abyss, because there was no money to build a uh, next space station after Mir at that time. Suddenly, from nowhere almost, these two very complex projects were kind of merged together and Russians benefited far, far more than NASA uh, benefited from that agreement. 
The International Space Station was designed in a manner that makes the partners interdependent. The Russian modules have the crucial thrusters to maintain the station's desired altitude and attitude and avoid collisions, while solar arrays on the U.S. side produce almost all the electricity. It would be risky for the life of the station. Neither side would really be able to survive very well without the other. Wayne Hale is a former space shuttle program manager, now on the NASA Advisory Council. The agency is working on contingency plans in case the Russians hastily bow out, but it's complicated. It would be a real technological reach, but there are teams off studying how to keep it going right now. So it probably would not bode well. It would certainly put a challenge to the system, but it doesn't mean that we would end our space station program you know, immediately. A divorce may not be practical, even if truly desired. And so the partnership endures, to the chagrin of some. All kinds of sanctions have been applied by the United States and the Western governments against Russia, but the International Space Station just sails on. Author Homer Hickam is a former NASA engineer and manager who helped negotiate the Memorandum of Understanding that guides the partnership. He says it's time to reevaluate the arrangement and pull the plug on the friendly photo ops. I just don't think it's good optics right now to show American astronauts and Russian cosmonauts uh, hugging and playing with their food and all that kind of thing and, and really recommended that they avoid those types of optics because after all, uh, right now the Russian government is engaging in a hideous war against its uh, neighbor Ukraine and killing men, women, and children right before our eyes. Up until now, the unlikely partnership in space that met with so much skepticism at the outset has succeeded beyond most expectations. Leroy Chow was station commander in 2004 and 05. It's pretty amazing even now looking back that, you know, all these countries uh, who were World War II enemies, Cold War enemies, I mean, sworn to destroy each other, came together and built this most uh, audacious space construction project ever tried, and, and it went off so well and it continues to operate so well. If we lose this, uh, you know, our ability to work peace peacefully in space with the Russians, what do we have left that keeps us together? It's only bad things, and this is the one good thing we have left. The space station agreement expires in 2024. NASA is hoping to keep it in orbit until 2030. In less bombastic moments, Dmitry Rogozin says Russia has made its decision and will notify its partners a year in advance. And liftoff. So it appears this fraught partnership will fly on for now, high above the fray. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Miles O'Brien.